live. All right, we're doing a mic check. Make sure everybody hears me live, loud and clear. Look at my assistant, make sure everything is, if you guys are, are hearing me, be sure to comment, make sure the comment stream is working. I can see myself now. Welcome guys to this beautiful Saturday afternoon. Fortunately, it is not raining on our side and it looks like the hurricane is gonna be turning off and kind of avoiding everybody now at this point. So I think we're all a little bit more relieved and excited, uh, especially since we're gonna be learning bracelets today because that's all we're gonna be about, bracelets. So if anybody has any issues or connectivity problems, uh, don't be shy. Let us know if we can help you out. We'll do our best to help you out. And if anything happens in the meantime, remember that you're able to come back and watch this video at another point. So if things happen and life gets in the way, don't worry. This video will still be available to you. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and start out uh, by explaining a little bit about bracelets and how bracelets seem to be uh, not only a popular th popular theme in the salon, but also something we struggle with as far as time is concerned and shape. We really don't know what kind of shape we want to go for. And at the same time, we really don't know how to effectively do it in a sufficient amount of time. And it is a popular thing we do frequently. And most of the time we do these bracelets, let's say every day, and we still don't know how we're achieving what we're doing. So it's always good to clarify what it is that we do, understand the steps that we have to take to get there, and be time uh, efficient. So we have to make sure we're spending and telling ourselves a certain amount of time on each leg and on each foot. So I'll start out with the most critical part of the bracelet and you cannot start a bracelet without setting the correct cuff and nowadays I, I see uh, the cuffs are evolving so 10 years ago the cuffs were done a certain way and 10 years later now today the cuffs are done in a little bit different fashion uh, so we're dropping the line a little bit more we're accentuating the breed standard which in this case is a poodle and the breed standard here says elegance. So we want to make the dog as tall as we can. And part of that starts with the correct cuff. So uh, this is Iris. This is my beautiful dog, my, my love of my life. And uh, we're going to be growing her out into a different haircut. It's going to be a surprise for everyone, including myself. It's going to be a new haircut for her and a possible new trend that's going to be going around. So we're going to avoid the front bracelets, but don't worry. I'm going to show you how to match the front to the back without really messing with the front. So we're going to achieve the back bracelets. I'm going to show you guys. We're going to spend a good solid 30 minutes understanding the bracelet and everything we need to know about it. So first thing we need is a 10, 15, 30, 40. It, it, honestly, it doesn't matter whatever pet you are doing inside of the salon uh, determines that factor. Because if you're doing a white dog, a sensitive coat or skin, you're going to be doing obviously a 9 or a 10 blade as far as the clean feet go. So for her, I'm not going to be demonstrating clean feet today. And she, uh, like I said earlier, we're going to be going into a new style. So I'm just going to briefly show you uh, kind of a correct poodle foot and uh, explain the cuff, the bottom cuff, which is an essential portion of the bracelet. So for, in her case, she's a show dog and very susceptible or used to the 40 blade uh, but we're growing out the hair on her foot so just for this demonstration i'm going to do a nine on my cordless five and one if you have a five and one that'll be fantastic it'll make your life a lot easier it's a good investment to have a five and one there's different companies out there that offer that 
Now, the uh, one easy way to determine where to set the correct line for your clean foot, if it comes to a poodle or even a Shih Tzu or whatever breed you're doing, is you find the back of the pad. So back here, you'll see the back of the pad where the hair kind of uh, starts to grow in. And that's going to tell you exactly where the line to the front of your clean foot is going to be. So one way to determine this is the back of the pad. I don't know how much delayed this is, but there we go. Okay. So back of the pad. And we're going to draw a line all the way around. Another way is to find the second digit or second knuckle. So obviously the one we always see that protrudes is the first one. It's hard to see on the camera because she's really fuzzy. Uh, but if you f rub your finger over the top of the foot, you'll feel the first knuckle, kind of like our knuckles. And just behind that, you'll find a second knuckle. And that's your correct line. <coughs> when doing the foot, you always want to go against the grain. In this case, I'm not going to do that because we're not here to learn a clean foot. We're here to learn the bracelet and we're growing this foot out. So I'm going to do the nine with the grain and just show you where the line would start so we can continue with the bracelet. So back of the pad, draw a line or a second knuckle, which is right here. I'm going to start with my nine and just go with the grain here. Just so you can see. where that line starts. Now feel free to ask any questions as you're watching. Uh, we do have some help today in watching the comments. So if you guys want to comment, ask any questions, or even say hello. Uh, we, are, we are watching, we are paying attention. So feel free to ask, don't, don't be nervous. So as you can see here, I'm gonna use the light of the clipper to show you where that line is on the foot. So here's the line on the foot, as you can see. I didn't go against the grain because uh, we're growing this foot out. I'm doing a new style on her. So just for you guys to understand where that line goes, it's on the second digit or the back of the pad. So. Next, we're going to do the most important part of the bracelet. We're going to make sure everything's nice and brushed out. When you're brushing any curly coat, you want to make sure you're brushing up, combing up and scissoring up as much as possible so you can encourage the follicle to do what it's supposed to do, which in this case is lift. So if I'm brushing down or combing down, I'm going to make everything grow downwards and that's I don't want that I want everything to grow upwards so the more I can comb brush and scissor the coat up the better off I am so we have a nice brushed out matte free bracelet now the first critical step we're gonna do is let me make sure she's standing correctly we are going to comb everything down for this step and the reason why we're going to do this is we're going to use our hands and we're going to push all this coat down to our shave point on where we shave the foot. So my hand is covering that line where we stopped and I can see everything that's sticking past my hand. So with the 40 blade now, I'm going to take the 5 and one and I'm going to edge around everything that's sticking past my hand. I'm not going to dig in there because this is a very sensitive part of the dog. And uh, usually our pets, especially with a 40 blade, 
are going to be a little too sensitive for this. So make sure you're just tapping and being super delicate, edging around with that 40 blade. Make sure I clean up the bottom of this foot a little bit. So as you can see now, I haven't moved my hand and there is nothing sticking past my hand anymore. So we can see that. And I'm now I'm gonna release the coat and shake. Now you can see a beautiful, perfect cuff on the bottom portion of the bracelet. Now those of you who don't know, these are not called palms. They are not called pom-poms, they are called bracelets. And I'll explain to you the importance of why they are called bracelets and not pom-poms. That looks really good right there, it's a good angle. So is everybody satisfied with the angles and the view? We had a comment there, I didn't see it. To edge? Is it, uh, is your question as far as the edging goes for the bracelet? Okay, so if I were in the salon as far as the foot goes, it would be a 10 or a 15. I usually never do a 40 blade on a pet. When it comes to the edging, I would still use a 40 blade but I would be extremely delicate. I would just tap the foot as I go around. Hopefully that answers your question. So now we can see the nice beautiful cuff. I'll show you what the cuff did look like beforehand. So you can see the difference in the cuff. So this is what it looked like before. And this is what it looks like now. Okay. So moving on to the next step is the top of the bracelet. So uh, like I said earlier, we're changing her style. So for this demonstration, I'm going to put on a comb attachment uh, just to show you where the line would stop on the top, which I think is one of the most important parts of your bracelet. So. For this demonstration, I am going to do a four comb, but typically this is a seven blade in the shop, a 10 blade in the shop, or even a four blade, or sometimes a one comb. We do one comb bikini cuts, Miami cuts. Uh, clown cut is what they uh, used to call it. Uh, so I am going to use a four comb just for the purpose of this demonstration. Um, if you ask me my preference, I would do this with a seven blade. Uh, that way you have a nice tight tailored body and nice uh, predominant bracelets. So I'm going to, first important rule is uh, to put the peace sign up. So put the peace sign up. And what you're going to do is you're going you're gonna to place your fingers where the thigh and the leg is in between your peace sign. Okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to slide our fingers down until our fingers stop. And there's a nice knuckle that uh, connect the two bones together. There's a nice big knuckle there. And at that same angle, is where my line is going to start and graduate into my bracelet. So again, we're going we're gonna to use the peace sign. We're going to place the leg in between the fingers and we're going to slide all the way down until it won't go anymore. Right where my fingers stop, there are two knuckles on each side 
of the leg holding and connecting these two bones together. So by sliding down, when my finger stops, it's naturally going to stop at this angle. And that's the same angle I'm going to set my bracelet. So I'm going to take that four comb. If I need to make the mark right now with the four comb, just so I don't forget. So yeah, I'm going to pretend that this is my first time doing it. And you might need to do this until you get the hang of it. But once you figure out where your, your bracelet should start or stop, it'll be as long as you get it in that angle, you'll always have it correctly. And it's just an easy way to determine where to set that bracelet. So we got a nice, decent finish on the, on the leg. And I'm just going to predominate, uh, make this, this line a little bit more predominant. So I repeat these steps on the other leg, just to make sure you guys get the concept of what I'm trying to explain to you. Uh, by doing this, it's going to help you a lot. Uh, it's going to eliminate the thought process that we're usually doing when we're in the shop. We spend a lot of time just thinking. So this eliminates the thought process. You already know, grab your finger, slide down, wait till it stops. At that mark, that's where we wanna start setting our bracelet. So now that we have the bottom and the top pretty much set where it's gonna be, now we're gonna comb everything up. The same thing we did at the first step, combing everything down. Excuse me. We're going to comb everything up. Now, here's one or two things you can do. If you are comfortable with your scissors. One way of doing this is combing up and knowing exactly where that line is. If you have to flip the hair over just to see where that line is, you can see how much wiggle room we have. Comb the hair up and we're going to take our scissors. It could be curved, straight, doesn't matter as long as we know where the line is and we're just going to do a nice straight line all the way across. Now you can see that automatically helped me with my uh, graduation, my blend line into my bracelet. Another way of doing this is if I comb all the way up, uh, this also takes a little courage to do, but if you're confident, you can achieve the task at hand. So I'm going to use the 40 blade again. I'm going to skim down where that line is, where I know that line is, and I'm just going to scoop out. And then I'll scoop out. And I'll scoop out. So I'll do this all around. After that hair is combed up, again, I'm skimming and scooping out. Skimming and scooping out. can see the inside here. So now you can see a nice blended line. If you ask me, the 40 gives you a nice more, uh, a, ni a nicer finish, more flush transition versus the scissors going to give you a little bit more extra work to do as far as finish work goes. So just by seeing that, I can tell exactly where my top of the bracelet and where my bottom of the bracelet as far as length goes, 
I know now what needs to be taken off the sides. So you can see just by stretching the leg back, you can see how short it is on the bottom, how short it is on the upper portion, and then how much of this shenanigans we have in the middle. So now all we have to do is bring these two together and we can use our curve shears or if you're not comfortable too much with your shears, you can always use a good set of texturizers or chunkers. So I'm going to use these reverse blenders here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring these two together. I'm not going to make rocket science out of this and I'm just going to bring them together and I'm going to use the form of my scissor to finish the shape that I'm looking for. Now, going back to the word bracelet and the shape that we're looking for, uh, the bracelet is more of a cylinder shape, not a round shape, but in the pet shop, because we're not dealing with show dogs and dogs that are proportionate, yet alone have the coat like we do on this dog, uh, the best shape to go for is a round palm shape. So uh, just like a cheerleader with the palms, a lot of the times we'll have to resort to that in the pet shop because of the sparse coat. Uh, maybe the legs are funky, maybe the foot is funky. So we want to eliminate the thought process as always. And in that case where we can't make it more cylinder like, we're going to go for a nice round look. So we can have a nice round, almost like a, a beach ball a mini beach ball on the bottom, but bracelet is, is used to help you understand the shape that we're looking for. So I'm going to go more of a, an elongated circle, more over a is that good? Yeah. So you can see how just by using the chunkers, I don't have to be a skilled uh, sculpting artist to create uh, kind of the shape and bring the two together. So I'm just bringing them together here. I'm going to show you the front with the curves. Again, I'm going to comb everything up. You can see this here. So you can rather use the curves like this and help the shape of the curb help you achieve that look or you can cross cut and kind of sculpt that way if you're more comfortable doing it like that. A nice good set of curves will help you achieve nice round shapes like this, round heads, top knots. So the same with the inside, I'm going to turn her. And the inside seems to be a hard part for righties or lefties, depending on what side we're doing. And to do this effectively, you just want to cross cut. The client typically doesn't see the lines that are going in, in between the legs. So I wouldn't worry too much about leaving marks on the inside of the palm shape or the bracelet shape that you're going for. Either way, at the end of the day, it's, it's what the client sees the most that you have to be worried about. Face, feet, and fanny are the focal points of any client dog. So as long as your feet, face, and fanny are nice and tidy and to the client's request, your, your, uh, revolving clientele will increase. So always make sure you pay attention to the details that tend to be overlooked a lot more frequently. In this case, you can tell I'm not doing that much work and I have a nicely finished bracelet. Does anybody have any questions until I repeat this step on the opposite side? Speak now or forever hold your peace. You guys are going to wait till last minute and ask me everything last minute. 
Is everybody learning so far? Can we get some engagement? Is everybody learning? Ta-da. See if we can get this this shape on um on the camera really good for them, Iris. Good girl, stay, stack, stack. Everybody saying do a question and answer. Okay. Oh, that's. Oh gosh. Scary. Everybody's learning. <laughs> Gabby, you'd be fine. Iris is up for rent. She's a little terror. Shortest length you would start setting the bracelet at? That's the question. Having a hard time understanding. That's who, Lisa? Lisa, uh, elaborate that question for me one more time. So I don't know if the question is how short can we make the bracelet or Do we know? So now, uh, as we go to the front, I'll show you how to set the front of the cuff really quick. And Lisa, don't worry about it. As soon as you elaborate your question, I will be more than happy to answer it. So now the front leg. So this is one thing I see a lot of people struggle with. They don't know where that line starts, ends. Iris, stay. And uh, a, a good trick, a funny trick, actually, is if you take your comb and you find the back of the br back bracelet, which is the highest point here, and you take your comb and you draw a line straight forward. It'll tell you exactly where to set your front bracelet. So what, um, if the dog is just beginning to grow the hair out, I guess when would you, when would you be able to do it? How, sh how short can you do it? Oh, well, I mean, you can do it, you can do it when it has no hair. I mean, the, the goal is that you think about what the dog potentially is going to look like. And that's, I think, a problem we always struggle with. I don't think none of them are looking at my face. Yeah. Um, the one thing we do struggle with as groomers is we don't think ahead. We're always worried about making the client or ourselves satisfied at that time we're grooming the dog. And if we just take a a little patience and kind of eliminate that OCD behavior that we have and groom the dog every time for the next time, you, you'll, you'll be satisfied that way. You, you won't have to, what I'm saying, Lisa, is you don't have to make it rocket science if you just groom, groom it thinking about what you want it to look like. So if it has no hair, set the mark. Uh, I wouldn't go anything shorter than a seven blade on a pet. If the dog is susceptible to it, you can set the pattern with the 10 and let that grow out from there. But I wouldn't go shorter than a seven blade, even when you do have all this volume. Hopefully I answered your question. Now I'm gonna repeat what I said about the front one more time. So I'm gonna find the highest point of the back bracelet, which is here. I'm going to use my comb and I am going to draw 
align forward. And that's where the front of my bracelet on my front leg is going to start or stop. Thanks, makes sense. You're welcome, Lisa. Okay, boom. So everybody understand the front. I'm not gonna repeat, uh, I'm not gonna do the front bracelet because we're growing her out into a new clip, but you can see you're gonna repeat those steps I did here on the front. Okay. And we're good on time, awesome. So now I'm gonna flip her over to the other side. And I'm gonna repeat everything I did on that side, on this side, but before I do that, I'm gonna show you a little secret when it comes to the bracelets and finishing up the bracelets. So it's always good to take uh, a thinner, a blender, a hybrid, uh, and go lift the opposite leg and kind of clean up the inside of that bracelet or leg that you were just doing on the other side. It's a good way to time manage and not try to do this while you're actually doing it. So you wanna move on to the next step and when you get to the next foot, I'm able to go in there and kind of smooth it out. Now, we're gonna do everything we did on that first bracelet one more time. I'm gonna set this on a 40. Before I do that, I'm going to take the nine and yes, you have a question? Fantastic question. Good question. I forgot to cover that. The front bracelet is not angled. It is completely straight on the top as it is on the bottom cuff. So you have a complete straight bracelet. On the front of the leg is a good example of what the bracelet should look like because it's definitely more cylinder because of the fact that it doesn't have that angle. So if you understand what I'm saying, the front of the leg, because it is straight up and down, and it does not have two different bones joining together, it's a straight line. So because of the back leg has a, two different bones meeting together at two different points of the body, we have to create that angle to set the balance on the dog. And what we use is the highest point to draw a line to the front, which that front line is completely straight. Happy? Answered? Get that like two hands up. Um, so now we're going to find the back of the pad and we're going to draw a line forward. I'm going to use a nine blade. I'm going to go with the grain because we're growing this foot out. If I wasn't growing this foot out, I'm going to clean the foot with a 10. In this case, it's a black dog in the pet shop. A black clean foot should be a 15. So. If this were a pet, I would be doing a 15. I would be going against the grain, but I will be stopping at the same line that I'm stopping at with the nine with. Understood? I don't hear any of you guys. That's fine, I'm moving on. <laughs> Tell him, Iris. My dog sees something outside of the window. I don't know what. So back of the pad, I'm drawing a line all the way around. I'm not getting fancy with it because we're growing this out. I don't want to take off too much hair. But for the sake of this demonstration, now we all know second knuckle or back of the pad, that's where we're going to create our pattern for our clean foot. You can't have a good bracelet without a clean foot. Now I'm going to switch over to the 40. I'm going to comb everything down. Comb everything down. I 
after I comb everything down, I'm going to grab my hand. I'm going to grab the leg. I'm going to push all this hair down all the way to where I shaved on my clean foot. So now you can see everything that's sticking past of my hand, it's going to go with the 40. Now because we're in the salon for a pet, we're going to make sure that we're just tapping this into the dog because if we dig in too much for the pets, they're a little too sensitive to take that 40 blade over and over again. It is a surgical blade, so we have to be extremely delicate. Iris is a show dog and a pet clip, and it's fine. We're all cut from the same cloth, right? Everybody, I think, is laughing. <laughs> this is a new experience for me. Hopefully, you guys are learning and enjoying this. Uh, if you guys do have any feedback, it would be great, as we are young groomerpreneurs trying to do as best as we can. We need your feedback, so it's always good to hear feedback, even if it isn't the most positive. So if you guys have anything to say as in regards to the video, the angles, or what you want to see. see, let us know. Don't hesitate. It can be anonymous if you No, I don't think that's possible, <laughs> but uh, that's fine. We won't take any anything out on you and we will give you what you want. So don't don't hesitate. Now you can see the bottom cuff line. Okay, everybody can see that. Now I'm gonna, before I comb up and do the next step, we're going to set the top line on the bracelet. Now the top line again for this dog, because we're growing her out, I'm only gonna put a four comb. Uh, but you can do this with a 10, a 7, a 15, what, you know, whatever number you're doing it with. Uh, if it is a show dog and a continental, you could do a 40 against the grain. It's pretty insane. But uh, whatever your choice is, the line will be the same, even for the pets. So we're going to take our we're going to take our P sign. All right. And we're going to find the leg. We're going to place the leg in between my P sign. I'm going to slide my finger down until it stops. There are two knuckles on each side of this leg where the each bone is connects. There is a knuckle, a ball joint on each side right here. Boom, boom. Your finger, your fingers are going to stop right at that knuckle and they're going to stop at an angle. So you want to make sure when we're setting this that we set it at that same angle. Okay. So grab your peace sign, slide it down till it stops. Take whatever number you're doing just so you don't forget and don't pass that line. Make your mark. Once you make your mark, then you can clean this up and really make your line as predominant as you can. In this case, it won't be so much. We're growing her out into a different haircut. Everybody give a round of applause for Iris. She's doing such a good job. There are all kinds of squirrels and animals running around outside and she's just being such a good girl. She'll be able to go into the treasure box later, get a little treat little snack or something. Anybody have any questions? Fantastic. There's a delay. So let me not get all excited yet. So far so good. Disaster strikes. All right, so I'm going to clean this up a little bit more. Time is money. Scared of money don't make money. Don't forget that. So let's not be, uh, let's not be perfectionist here because at the end of the day, it's only us that sees 
the things we see, the client sees something completely different. So remember, make sure your face, feet, and fanny are on point. In this case, our feet are about to be on point. So we have our top line, we have our bottom cuff. So now the next step is uh, the inside, I'm gonna do it with the scissor. The outside, I'm gonna do it in my recommendation or my preference. So I'm gonna comb now everything up. One way is to take the curves and finish that edge off with the curve, as you can see here. So I'm just cutting normal here, nothing fancy. And I'm using the curves literally to bring my cuff and my top line together. So all of this is gonna be shenanigans. It's gonna look like shenanigans. It's gonna look like a party that happened last night and you showed up the next day and all the cups are on the floor. That's what you're gonna see here. And all you need to do is clean it up. There's, there's no rocket science to it. We're just gonna bring those two links together. So that is one way you can do it cross-cutting or you can do it normal. Okay, now I'm going to show you the other way on the outside. So I like to take the 40, I like to skim on the outside and scoop out, skim, scoop out, skim, scoop out, scoop out. So what the 40 does is it gives you a nice clean edge and it takes all those little hairs out and I really don't have to pass back over that with my scissors at all, really. The 40 just kind of really feeds all the follicles through the teeth and cuts everything. As long as you have a steady hand and the dog or yourself doesn't sneeze, you should be okay. Now, since we did the inside with the curves, like I explained to you, now we're gonna do the outside with uh, some blenders or some chunkers, just so you know that it, 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 you don't have to be a um, scissor expert to achieve a nice round or cylinder look. In this case, we're gonna go for a kind of an in-between a round and bracelet because she is in a pet trim, but we are growing her out. So I want to make sure we leave some hair there. Uh, otherwise, I would make this shape more round than cylinder-like because the client, again, sees something else. If you make them more cylinder-like, client typically is going to tell you next time make them more roundy, maybe more scissor-like. Uh, it's kind of a funky gray area, but if you manage to find something in the middle between, which is kind of what I got going on here, uh, you'll be just fine. And this is gonna determine uh, like correct length, balanced length for a seven blade all over, in this case, a four comb. Um, so if you wanna go shorter, you can go shorter. If you wanna go longer, you can. It won't be the most balanced bracelet or dog, but you know, in the shop, we, we don't have any rules. You can do whatever you want. And it, it'll just, the length will be based and determined upon after you do your cuff and your top line. So we can't determine the length of our bracelet until we set our cuff and our top line cuff of the, of the bracelet. So here's our top line of the bracelet and here's our cuff. After that is when you determine the length. So as you can see here, I think we have a balanced bracelets. I think they are symmetrical. Do we have a full view back there? Yeah. 
So we can see here, if she stands straight, I'm gonna kind of fix it up to match the other side. And these are blenders, so I can whack really strong or lightly and not do too much damage. It's very, very forgiving. So if, if I recommend you to use a forgiving shear more over than the curve, so that way you're able to control the shape that we're going for. So you can see both palms here. They're more kind of palmy, so round but cylinder-like. Uh, these two bracelets are now even. So I, I'm satisfied that they're balanced, they're even, symmetrical. And I'm just going to kind of touch up a little bit. And in this case, since I already cleaned up the inside of this bracelet, in order to clean this side of the bracelet, instead of moving the dog, I'm just going to go to the opposite side and clean up the inside of that bracelet. Boom. OCD is done. I'm not going to spend any more time on that because the client does not see what we see. So we have to remember that. We have to train our eye to kind of think like the client. So face, feet, and fanny. Both of my feet on the back are good to go. Now I'm going to show you one more time how to set the front bracelet. So let's get that wide angle. wide angle. Okay. So she's got a little crooked foot back there. We're going to straighten that out. We're going to find the high point of the bracelet and we're going to draw a line forward. Boom. That's our correct line on the front. So in this case, you just draw it with your comb so you can see where to stop. And then you'll take your clipper and you'll run it down to that line, whatever blade you're doing, in a straight line all the way around. Then you'll be able to do exactly what we did on the back side, on the front side. Any questions? Because now we're about to bling it out. Everybody loves Iris? Iris loves you. She loves you, so keep supporting her so she can continue to give you these great videos. Because her, her short career, her show career was cut short. So I'm gonna show you a little, uh, a little, a little secret. Little, a little bling, all right? So you can find uh, good glitter spray. Uh, in this case, I have some Victorino Stylo. All right, so this is an actual barber product. And what's great about this product is the, the glitter particles are like super microscopic. It's almost like sand. So it gives me a very subtle shimmer on the dog. It doesn't look like I sprayed glitter. So we're gonna bling out this bracelet. Uh, the glitter in this bottle is really heavy. So instead of spraying it directly on like we typically do, uh, I'm gonna let it kind of fall on the bracelet. So I'm gonna shake it up really well. Again, this is Victorino Stylo Temporary Hair Color, and it's silver, in other words, AKA bling. It's, it is bling for the her. So we're going to bling it out and you can see how it falls. Can we get a close up? Oh, we do. Yeah. So you can see how it kind of falls 
on the coat. I'm not going to go crazy with it because everybody's going to be eating glitter today. But you can see these particles are like sand. They're extremely tiny. And just as the light hit it, it gives it just a nice shimmer. Bling, bling. So I'll do it one more time. I'll let it kind of fall. You guys can see how I do it. So you can see it kind of fall. Victorino style little temporary hair color. So here's your bling. <clears throat> now, if you guys enjoyed this webinar, I have great news for you. It's going to get 20 times better. And what do I mean by this? In October, mid-October, we are having a feature exclusive webinar from the one and only Kenichi Nagasi. So Kenichi Nagasi is flying over from Japan uh, to Groomer Society personally just to do this webinar and we're gonna have some private seating for the webinar as well as meet and greets and possible VIP packages which we're still trying to work out the kinks on the VIP packages um, but mm -hmm. so what we're what we're aiming to do is give you a true webinar experience we're going to have angles from all over the place we're also going to be up close and personal so uh, kanichi is going to be translated into english and the english hopefully will be translated back to japanese one way or another uh, we're going to try to make it available in spanish so if you do have those spanish friends uh, make sure to fill them in on this we're going to put up some tickets for sale pretty soon, so stay tuned to that. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, like our Facebook page, engage with us, make sure you uh, enroll into these giveaways that we do, and uh, look forward to this Kanichi Nagasi because we're all excited about it. Uh, we're really pumped. It's gonna be October 16th, I believe, live. You'll be able to watch it before or after, excuse me, and you'll also be able to do meet and greets. Uh, if you do the VIP packages, we'll have actual goodie bags for you with all kinds of stuff in there. And um, yeah, it's, keep a lookout for that. Anything else I'm missing? All right, so now question and answer, some Q&A. Anything you guys wanna ask? It doesn't have to be related to the bracelet. We have a question. Um, is that shimmer available on Amazon? Where do you get it? This shimmer is, I believe, available on Amazon. Now, the thing about this shimmer, hmm? we'll, link it in the description we'll link it in the description below. There is a place located in Tampa if you cannot get it in Amazon because I have a hard time and I think everyone does because this spray is very, very sought out and it goes out as quick as it comes out. So uh, usually, typically on Amazon, it's sold out, but I found a place located in Tampa, a barber supply that constantly has gold and silver. The gold one, I'm not too fond over, but the silver is perfect. It gives me that shimmer I'm looking for. The gold is kind of artificial. Any other questions? Product I used, uh, scissors I used, um, maybe what you want to see on the next video. Uh, what would you guys want Kenichi to do besides his Asian? Would you want him to do something that you're typically not used to him seeing, not used to seeing from him? Iris wants to know. Could I ship it, what, the spray? They want us to make that available. 
Well, the goal is that we are going to be distributing this. Uh, of course, Groomer Society, because it's only three of us, as much as you see this crazy production, uh, we have to do things one by one. So one of our goals is to be distributors and distribute you guys not only the products we use, but products that you should have in your grooming shop from spray to mats, pricing ranging from super cheap and affordable all the way up to affordable. We don't like to shove anything too crazy or expensive down your throat because we're groomers. We're trying to make money, save more money, spend less money. And I think selling you a $20 spray doesn't do justice. And this spray is definitely not $20. I think it's like six ninety nine or something like that. It's really affordable. So Victorino Stylo. If you don't know who that is, he is a fantastic Puerto Rican barber. Most of them are Puerto Rican. Go figure. So any other questions? Everybody, everybody, look. Oh, look at my face right there. That's fantastic. Any more questions? Anna, I see you, Anna. We appreciate your support, Anna, and your assistant that's helping us out with our airs. We appreciate that. If you guys do catch anything, feel free to let us know. Again, we are young groomerpreneurs trying to make it out here, taking it one step at a time. And not everybody's perfect, but if you guys help us out, you know, in, in no time we'll give you the best Perfection, closest last, to perfection. Last question, yes. Very last question is what chunkers are you using? All right, so chunkers. I am using fresh. If you follow me, you will see which camera can I get it on? This one? Bring it up to your face. Right here? Right here. So here's a fresh shear. Iris, excuse you. Sorry, guys. Iris just burped. So here's a fresh shear. It literally, they're called Fresh Shears. It's a new startup company based out of Georgia. And these guys really are killing it right now. They're taking the scissor game to another level. They're actually giving us superb quality shears at, at, at an affordable price. So there, there's no other company out there. I'm a scissor connoisseur. They're on my neck. I live, eat, and breathe scissors. So when I found this company, I had to get my hands on them. And uh, they're just great. So they're a hundred bucks. Any model you get, these chunkers are a hundred bucks. They're reverse. So everything's on the opposite side. And they have a, a flipper handle. And that means I can use it on either side. And even a lefty can get away with it, even though I get ridiculed for saying that. It is true. So here's the chunker. I use the fresh thinner. This is a 32 tooth thinner. I don't like too many teeth. And then I used my own curve, my own signature line from Loyalty Pet Products Curve. Uh, if you want to get these, I suggest you get the curves and the straights. And the thinners, the chunkers. Fresh, fresh ships anywhere. That's the great thing about fresh. They ship anywhere. The prices are still the same. Of course, shipping will be a little bit more, um, but we'll get it to the UK. Any other questions? Oh, look at that, man. That's fresh. This is crisp. You guys. Like thumbs up if you guys like the quality. If the quality was what was it worth five bucks? Would you pay more? Was it worth was it not worth the five bucks? Let us know. And I think we're gonna we're gonna be signing off here momentarily. If anyone else doesn't have anything else to chime in. I would like to know when are you, when are yours coming out? Um, so you're talking about the, the hybrids, the G hybrids here. What camera is it?
and it's live, dude. Hold on, here we go. <laughs> this is gonna be a good. This is gonna be a good commercial right here. So I just dropped the prototype of the hybrids, which Anna asked when we're coming out. Oh man, you missed it. <laughs> uh, uh, Anna asked when when we're coming out with our own line of hybrids, which this is the first line we're going to release. And we are waiting for special products to get. I just dropped these straight on the floor and I'm going to try them on the dog and we're going to see how good these shears really are. So everybody witnessed that and we're going to witness this. Even Iris is wondering if they cut. So these are the, these are the hybrids. Uh, the teeth are on the opposite side. I believe it is 30 teeth or 32 tooth. And it has a great ergonomic handle, offset handle. Got a nice seven and a half inch or eight inch, including the tang. And we are coming out with this as soon as we figure out what we're gonna do with this other product that's coming in that we're gonna be surprising you guys with soon. Fantastic, you're gonna love it. I think we prioritized what should be coming out first and we don't wanna be coming out with everything all at once because then we won't have anything to give you guys in six months. So we wanna make sure everything is paced. The first thing you're gonna love and it's gonna be well worth waiting for the hybrid. So here we go, I just dropped them, moment of truth. So can we get that, can we get that uh, camera right here? Is it there? Let's see you guys. Yeah. All right, so I dropped them. They landed straight on, on the tang, opened, and I adjusted them to the right tension. I don't feel or see anything crazy, but we're gonna see if they still work. And they do. So as you can see, even just the tip, look at the tip, look at the tip. Just the tip is cutting. So if you're wondering what these are, again, these are gonna be Groomer Societies hybrid g hybrid is what it's called i just dropped them live on camera and they are cutting still so the tip boom anna i hope i answered your question i'm going to keep you with some anticipation still we're not going to release them on purpose because i feel like we have a better execution plan on how we're going to uh, release products. So um, I'll adjust these shears because even though they are great and they still work, I dropped them and they're not cutting exactly the same way. So keep a lookout for new products, a new product. They are in the mail. So as long as they get through customs, we'll be able to release them. As soon as we get them, we'll make a fun video out of it. Uh, we'll actually do an unboxing, so everybody will be surprised by the unboxing, and it'll be exactly what you can expect when you do order from us in the future. And like I said, thank you guys for joining us. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for signing up. Uh, we don't know how many times we're going to offer $5 webinars, but I promise you they're always going to be affordable. The next webinar with Kenichi, you get me and Kenichi. I believe it's gonna be at least two hours and it's gonna be $29.99. And because they signed up for this webinar, they're gonna be receiving a special offer. So because you signed up for this one, you're gonna be receiving a special offer in your email for a discount on that next seminar. So the only thing we do ask for you guys is to share and promote for us, help us get as many groomers as we can on the society. So thank you guys for joining. 
Uh, look me up. You can follow me on Facebook or Instagram if you don't already do that. Iris, unfortunately, does not have her own. She's not going to look like this probably the next time you see her. But from both of us, we want to say thank you. And uh, have a good night. And it looks like we're going to be enjoying the weekend after all. So the hurricane's not coming, huh? Good night.